here's a trivia question. What do Dan Marino, Doug Flutie, and I have in common? Anybody? Obviously, obviously we're all three really good looking guys. So it's not that. And I do hold several collegiate and NFL passing records. But, uh, you know, PlayStation doesn't count. So, but we all have kids with autism. We all have that. And I learned that, you know, you learn that when you join the club. They give you a little pamphlet. <laughs> Welcome to autism. So, uh, so I learned that about, uh, you know, Doug and Dan, and I call them that because I don't know them. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't let me call them that if I was in their presence. But um, they've, they've both started foundations named after their kids, you know, and I hope to do the same someday, but uh, I gotta make a little money first, you know. <laughs> you know, a $12 foundation, just not gonna do it. <laughs> hey, let's order a pizza. You got tip money? Uh, yeah, it's kinda nutty. But uh, you know, when you, when you move through the world of autism, the first thing you learn, and this is so important, I can't stress this enough, but the first thing you learn is how important communication is. Communication is so important. You know, we got so many communication professionals uh, sprinkled throughout the audience. Communication is, is huge. If you, if you can't communicate, if we can't communicate, we might as well be swinging from the trees, throwing our poo at each other. Because without communication, we got none of that. But uh, one of the greatest benefits, and you're saying to me, hey, Rick, what's the benefit of having a child with autism? Right? You're saying that. What, what could possibly be a benefit? But one of the greatest benefits, this is a little weird, but you get to go, if you live in Tuscaloosa or anywhere nearby, at some point during your trek through the world of autism, you get to go to the Speech and Hearing Center. <laughs> yes! Get up. You're out there. I love you. You know who you are. I should have known something was up. And you're like, why is he getting so excited about the Speech and Hearing Center? Well... I, I knew something was up. Like the first day we go in there, we're sitting there with our son, you know, he's playing with blocks. And in walks Barbara Burgess. Oh my goodness. Can y'all play Brick House? Oh, anyway. So, <clears throat> and my wife, what? My wife knows I got a crush on Barbara Burgess. It's okay. Uh, anyway, so she walks in. Barbara Burgess is, you know, I respect her tremendously. Her professional knowledge is outstanding. But she's a hot babe. <laughs> yeah! I'm speaking the truth. So, so yeah, so you go in there and, 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 you know, Barbara does some things and does a few, you know, she analyzes this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then she hooks you up with her graduate students. And here's another thing that's weird. The graduate students, like 99% of the communicative disorder majors are female. And another 98% of that 99% are hot chicks. <laughs> hot, I'm talking hot. I mean, I couldn't, when I was in school, I couldn't talk to these chicks in my peak of freshness, you know? <laughs> couldn't do it, could not talk to these women. So I would get sent in there, and a lot of times when Sam was little, you know, oh, here's your speech therapist. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times when Sam was little, they would ask me to go back to the room with them where they're doing the therapy. And, and the therapy's like showing them pictures and stuff. And you know, it's not like they're sticking it with needles or anything. So I'm, I don't have a lot to do. So I'm sitting there, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the, I'm a man, okay? I'm, a, I'm married, but I, doctor, I have these thoughts. Um, anyway, so I'm in there. We're doing therapy with Sam. They're doing great. He's doing gangbusters. It's, it's just wonderful, you know. And I'm sitting there going, think about the therapy. <laughs> therapy. Therapy. Must do therapy. It was tough, I'm telling you. It was, it was tough for me. Uh, I'm sure it was difficult for Sam, but he had other stuff to do. Oh, my. It was, it was phenomenal. So, you know, you dads out there, anybody involved, speech and hearing center. <laughs> Top notch, top notch, I'm telling you. Great, great part of the experience. You take your fun where you can get it, you know? I call it something for daddy. Yeah, something for daddy. Woo! Daddy needs something to think about. Yeah. And we've gotten to this little deal now. It's mostly, uh, mostly him and his mom. They have this little deal now where they're trying to print out the internet. Thank you. 
We're trying to print out the damn internet. Yeah. So you guys can sleep better tonight knowing that at my house, there's a hard copy of that thing. In case anybody needs it, I got it. We got about nine million pages of obscure NASCAR facts and stats at my house. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy about that. That's good, we got them all, man. So uh, we don't have the naughty stuff on the internet. You're gonna have to make that copy for yourself. But we've got the NASCAR stuff, we've got military stuff, we got all that kind of stuff. But we've had you know, a really good team working with them for several years. Uh, one of the things we would get, these little reports at the end of every semester from Sam's hot, hot speech therapist. <laughs> Something for day. Yeah. So we would get these reports, you know, and, and we'd have these little meetings, we'd sit down, they'd get up a little paper, and everything was great, you know, everything was great across the board, except we'd get these little concerned looks. It'd be like, um, Mr. Dowling, um, Sam was having trouble using his scissors and stringing his beads. <laughs> What? Using his scissors and stringing his beard. He doesn't like to use scissors. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm a grown man. I use scissors maybe five times a year. You know? And I've never strung a damn bead. I had never done that. So I'm, I'm not too worried about this. You know? Not a big deal. So, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, if you guys could come up with some kind of test that involved video games, because my son is a level seven kung fu zen master at video games. <laughs> this kid, we got this one game where you're a raccoon and you're trying to get past the dogs and steal stuff, you know? This, this kid has finished the video game. All these levels, he's finished it. I never finished it, the dogs eat me. <laughs> My son has finished this game, but he can't string a bead and he doesn't like using scissors. It's, uh, I don't know, the kid's, the kid's amazing. He's an amazing kid, he's my favorite kid. Uh, the, the biggest thing that we've come across is that everybody from time, you know, from our entry into the world of autism, we've had a great team behind us. And, and a lot of those people are in the room tonight, and I love y'all, and I thank you. It's, it's, been a, it, it's been a weird ride, you know? We, you know, I don't know of a lot of other families that are printing out the internet at home. I, it's it's kind of strange. We get together, we talk about this stuff. There, you know, you get fixated on things, and you share these things with each other. Very strange. But what I want to leave you with, though, is, is as a parent, I, I think about the future of my kid, and I think, and that always revolves back to these two dreams. There's the bad dream and the good dream. And the bad dream, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on because it's kind of bad. And the bad dream is, you know, I looked at the future, my son's unhappy, he's not able to take care of himself, he doesn't live by himself, that's a bad dream. I don't, I don't like to spend a lot of time there. But the good dream, the good dream is that my son is in the future, he's happy, maybe he went to college, maybe he's got a good job, he's, he's a happy guy, he's got friends, he's got people that love him, and people that are taking care of him. And I want to tell you, it means so much to me that there are so many people in Tuscaloosa helping us work on the good dream. It's... <laughs> yeah, it's... The good dream... Yeah, yeah, the good dream, y'all. The good dream is what it's all about. The good dream keeps you going. And this program, Arts and Autism, is such a wonderful thing. He's learning so many wonderful things. He's learning social skills, although he probably doesn't realize it, which is best. Um, but he's learning these things. He's, he's making progress. He loves, he's, he's got some artwork out there. Bid it up, come on, get it up there. But uh, he's, he's doing some wonderful stuff. And I, you know, this program means so much to us. And y'all being here means so much to us. And uh, you know, I love y'all. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good time.